Fellowship 自治 Scholarships helps Hunan University of Chinese Medicine student Li Yu Li change for the better. Indonesia's city volunteers hold a Buddha Day ceremony at the city Padang Liaison Office in West Sumatra for the very first time. Welcome to Dai Headlines. I'm Helena. Thank you for joining us. In Thailand's Samma Praktan province, on May 20th, a fire broke out at a riverside market of Bangfli district, destroying 31 houses and stores. Thankfully, everyone escaped the fire safely. Upon receiving the news, Tsuji volunteers arrived on site to hand out consolation cash to survivors. The Bangfli Riverside Market in Samo Prakan Province is one of the oldest markets in Thailand. It is also an important place where local merchants gather to do business. However, a recent fire destroyed much of its glory. On the evening of May 20th, a huge fire broke out at the market, burning down 31 houses and stores. Thankfully, everyone on site escaped the incident unharmed. Following the tragedy, locals sipped through the wreckage looking for any trace of their belongings. Upon receiving the news, city volunteers arrived at the market to conduct a disaster assessment. <laughs> Knowing that many of the survivors are in desperate need of help, city volunteers thoughtfully hand out consolation cash to 83 survivors. I am deeply moved by the volunteers' love and care. They gave us encouragement and treated us like family. When a disaster strikes, we see love pouring in from different places. This love from members of the public will be sure to warm the disaster survivors' hearts. This is city volunteer Suripatra Poentra, who used to live in the market. Although Poin Trad moved away some 30 years ago, she still considers the market her home. I want to offer my love and care to all the disaster survivors because we are one family. This is what I have learned from Master Zhen Yan. After receiving consolation cash from the city volunteers, everyone prays together for peace and harmony. In China, Changsha City volunteers have been awarding scholarships to students in need at Hunan University of Chinese Medicine for nearly a year. At the same time, the volunteers also showered these needy students with their love and kept them company. Li Yuli, who is one of the scholarship recipients, has been completely transformed as a result. A play about a son's regret of not spending more time with his parents when they were still alive resonates with the students in the audience. Changsha City volunteers are in Hunan University of Chinese Medicine to award needy students with scholarships. But besides monetary aid, Ziji's ideals are also passed down to these young minds. As you love and care for others, eventually you will discover that you like what you do very much. Scholarship recipient Li Yu Li has gained confidence thanks to city volunteers' encouragement. She has written down her transformation over the past year and courageously steps on stage to transfer her scholarship to those students in greater need. In the past, I always thought a person's character can't be changed. Now I realize it's not that it can't be changed, it's whether you want to make a change or not. As May is a month of filial gratitude, thus volunteers have arranged for students to serve tea to repay their teacher's grace. <laughs> Seeing the growth and maturity of these students after being nurtured by the volunteers makes even the strongest skeptic believe that with enough heart, anything is possible. In China's Zhejiang province, the Hangzhou Jingsi Books and Cafe recently celebrated its first anniversary. Already, the cafe has become a part of local residents' life and a center for the spread of humanistic values in the community. May the aroma of books, coffee, and city humanity reach our souls and touch our hearts. The spiritual home of Suzhou's and Hangzhou's residents, the Hangzhou Jinsi Books and Cafe is celebrating its first anniversary. When first opened, the shop was the second such store in the area, and the eighth Jinsi Books and Cafe in China. 
Over the past year, the store has hosted 51 spiritual workshops. We are now doing much better in many areas than we did before. Both the shop and I have grown together as a result. Now the cafe has become part of local life here, and also the center of humanistic values in the community. This place really feels like home to me. People here are so sincere and true. Even a small space like this can bring warm feelings and help cleanse our spirits. It is all thanks to Chen Jun, who decided to turn his bar into a spiritual cultivation ground. Because so many people have come together to contribute to this positive energy, Hangzhou is not just blazed by beautiful landscapes, but also the beauty of our hearts. Hopefully, the cafe will continue to share Ziji's humanistic values with more visitors and inspire them to do good deeds. To guide children onto the right path, Northern Taiwan's Jingsi Books and Cafe will be inviting young volunteers aged 3 to 12 to join a sutra performance this coming August. In preparation, staff members at the cafe launched the sign language class at the Ziji Taipei Eastern District office for the children and their parents. After spreading Master Zheng Yan's Dharma, I'm very happy because I'm doing one more good thing on her behalf. Be more filial to parents. Young volunteers are practicing a sign language song to express their thanks to their parents, while several little ones among the audience are also following their movements. These Buddhist scriptures may be able to help settle children's hearts, so I have brought them here to participate. My children and I are both vegetarians. I think this is a great opportunity for them to garner even more blessings. As part of the preparation for the Young Volunteer Sutra performance this coming August, staff members of the Jingsi Books and Cafe hold their first sign language training class and seize the opportunity to promote vegetarianism. Eating meatless food is good for our health. Animals are innocent. We should not hurt them. The poor animals killed by mankind are living beings too. This year we hope each young volunteer can reach out to more like-minded friends and their parents and invite them to join our event, helping them learn of today's messages of truth, goodness and beauty. Thanks to these young volunteers, more and more families are introduced to Tsuji and have gained a better understanding of the NGO's message of love. Next, we meet ninth grader Ajin, who since partaking in the rehearsals at the Sutra of Profound Gratitude to Parents for the Tsuji Dai School's upcoming graduations, has learned to be more filial and respectful to her parents, thus actualizing the profound meaning of the Buddhist scripture. At the Tsuji Dai School in Tinkering, students are rehearsing for their Sutra of Profound Gratitude to Parents Sign Language Performance, which will be debuted at the school's graduation ceremony. We hope that upon graduation, our students will remember to respect and be filial to their parents no matter what. Ninth grader Ajeng is among the group taking part in the Sign Language Musical. With each rehearsal, Ajin gains a deeper understanding of the Buddhist text and has started to change her ways. I was childish before. I would disobey my parents and wouldn't listen to them. If they asked me to do something, I would come up with an excuse and turn them down. But I've changed now. Whatever they need help with, I will do right away. I am improving. At break time, Ajin helps tidy up the classroom, and now she knows that the first step to showing filial piety is to not let her parents worry about her studies. There is still time to repay the grace of our parents. If we delay in taking action, when we come to the end of our life, it might be too late.
Once a stubborn and disobedient child, a Jane's mother cannot believe how much her daughter has changed. She was more stubborn before and would just lose her temper. She's much better now and more obedient. As parents, we don't ask for much. We just want her to be diligent in her studies and be a filial child. That's all we ask for. Ajing's parents' wish has already come true, and this new self-awareness will remain with Ajing as she embarks on her new journey upon graduation. In Germany, for the second year, Hamburg City volunteers host the Buddha Day ceremonies to help more Germans learn about Dharma Joy. But first to Haiti, where the Stade Silvio Cater Stadium, that served as an emergency shelter in the aftermath of the 2010 earthquake, was transformed into a spiritual cultivation ground by local and U.S. city volunteers. In the aftermath of 2010 Haiti earthquake, Tsuji carried out a distribution at this football stadium for a whole month. Now, four years later, U.S. and local volunteers have come together once again to transform the stadium into a spiritual cultivation ground. 2,300 people are attending this year's Buddha Day ceremony in Haiti, which is already an achievement. Next up is to get them to march in formation. We have learned quite a lot, especially how to properly organize people into a team of 10s or 20s. Basically, we learned to restrain ourselves and self-discipline. These qualities are what the Haitians need the most. To properly control the crowd is truly difficult, but I think we managed to pull it off. The crowd here is following our lead. This is a historical moment because for the first time, so many people have come to participate. The ceremony was a success thanks to all the hard work invested by volunteers. A day earlier, a four-hour rehearsal was carried out in Chinese under the scorching sun. Like Mark Arthur, local volunteers used pinyin to memorize the Chinese lines. We learned three songs about uh, the meaning. The main idea is uh, to purify our soul, our heart. To help participants walk around the ceremonial platform in unity, the U.S. volunteers first show an example. I don't speak French, and calling on left and right is troublesome, so we thought we would just make big movements for them to follow. Instead, they followed a movement down to the letter and wobble left and right as if they were dancing. They're really adorable. The ceremony was carried out to local rhythms, and the ceremonial platforms feature local touches, such as leaves of moringa trees placed in recycled PET bottles in place of flower arrangements. Despite this being a Catholic country, the Buddhist ceremony was carried out with solemnness and grace. In the afternoon, parents and children of Tsuji's Happy Campus program come together to celebrate Mother's Day at a local church to repay the grace of the Buddha, their parents, and fellow human beings. At the end of the event, participants take home bookmarks featuring Jinsi aphorisms in Creole and promise to return the next year with more family and friends. Meanwhile, in Hamburg, Germany, the Tsuji Buddha Day ceremony was held at a local Chinese school. To help facilitate the event, volunteers from France came to show their support. Even before the event begins, a sense of sacredness fills the air. Moved by the sound of the Buddhist chanting, participants reverently pay their respects to the Buddha, their parents and fellow human beings. Even though most European participants are strangers to Buddhism, they were still inspired by the procession, such as Gero, a med student who plans on interning at Tsuji's hospitals in Taiwan. The presentation is quite lovely. A religious ceremony like this is seldom seen in Germany. 
Christian or Catholic ceremonies are more common here. To me, this is a whole new experience. <laughs> Also this year, 12 volunteers from a local book club have decided to enact parts of the Buddhist scriptures to help the audience better understand the Dharma. Through enacting the Buddhist scriptures, we hope people can take the Dharma to heart and at the same time strengthen their spiritual cultivation. We hope more Bodhisattvas will be inspired to join us in doing Tzu's work and learn to sign. Tzu is the best way to learn the Dharma. Purifying their spirits through the ceremony, participants depart with the wish to contribute more goodness to the world. In Indonesia's West Sumatra, Tzu volunteers held the tri celebration of Buddha Day, Mother's Day, and Global Tzu Day at the Tzu Batang Liaison Office. Invited on stage, volunteer Winnie is already in tears. As Winnie's son kneels down in front of her and serves her tea, both mother and son break down into tears. In the past, Winnie and her son often misunderstood one another. Sending her son to attend city classes, Winnie only thought it would help his manners and character. However, the outcome exceeded all her expectations. Mom, I'm sorry. No longer able to fulfill his filial duties towards his mother, volunteer Wu Yuan An repents for his past mistake. I really regret sending my mother to a nursing home to live. I hope everyone hears my plea and doesn't send their mother to a nursing home. Don't wait until it's too late to fulfill your filial duties. There isn't an unteachable child, only solutions that parents have yet to find. Seeing Hundro with his Tsuji Gray uniform, his mother's heart is at ease. My child often talked back to me, but as his mother, I continue to love him with all my heart. I often lost sleep over this issue until Tsuji sisters came into our lives and my son changed for the better. I am very grateful for all the emotional support Tsuji has provided our family. This is the first tri celebration of Mother's Day, Buddha Day, and Tsuji Day that Tsuji Padang Liaison Office has held since its establishment in 2010. A little rain did not stand in the way of Tsuji's Dharma family and members of the public in gathering to pray for a world filled with peace and harmony. In China's Tianjin City, Tzuji volunteers held a gratitude event at their local liaison office where participants expressed their love towards their mothers. During the gathering, many children took the chance to repay their mother's grace by offering them a cup of tea and a warm hug. At the Tzuji Tianjin Liaison Office, Tzuji volunteers are holding a gratitude event to give members of the public the chance to repay their parents' grace. <laughs> Although shy at first, many still seize the opportunity to say I love you to their mothers. <laughs> <laughs> Some couldn't hold back their tears. Mother, I love you. I will fulfill my filial duties. While others proudly show their love. We will be living in darkness when our mothers are no longer with us. I love you, Mom. The interaction between mothers and their children inspires participants to seize every opportunity to fulfill their filial duties before it is too late. Filial duties cannot wait. We need to seize every opportunity before it is too late. I'm very sad because my parents are no longer around. Everything I said comes too late. Thanks to the event, 400 members of the public realized that it is never too late to fulfill their filial duties. 
Next to me, a foreign spouse from China, Wu Geng. In their third year of marriage, Wu's husband left home due to a gambling debt and left his child and parents in Wu's care. Despite life's difficulties, Wu greets each day with gratefulness and optimism. After a 12-hour shift at the factory, upon arriving home, a hot meal prepared by her father-in-law is already waiting for Wu Geng. Expressing affection verbally is something Taiwanese elders are not accustomed to, but Wu's father-in-law's thoughtful gesture speaks volumes. Sometimes when there's just rice and nothing else, she will eat it nevertheless. Wu Geng is a foreign bride from China and has been living in Taiwan for 11 years. Because of a gambling debt, her husband took off, leaving behind his child and parents. Although many people suggested that she move on with her life, Wu says that taking care of her family is her responsibility. I cherish and love my family. In my eyes, my family is perfect and there are no flaws. She's very filial. My neighbors say it's my blessing to have her as my daughter-in-law. Upon learning of the family's plight, Tsuji volunteers plan on supporting Wu's child through the new Shoot Scholarship program. If it were our own daughters, we would feel bad for them too, right? But she's very content and says it's all right. Paying the love and care she has received forward, Wu makes monthly contributions to Tsuji to help the needy. <laughs> Choosing happiness over life's bitterness, contentment is Wu's greatest asset. <laughs> In Taichung's Dali, we meet some devoted seniors at Rianghua Borough who put together a recycling team 20 years ago to keep their community clean. Let's take a look. All of these seniors are recycling volunteers of Rianghua Borough in Dali, Taichung. Among them is 87-year-old Grandma Kang Zhang Chou. Doing this is good for my health. It makes me sweat and I really enjoy it. Some said that I shouldn't do it since I am already old, but I am not worried because I want to do the things that makes me happy. The team is already in its 20th year and all members are seniors. As the team also works together with Siji occasionally, some of its members such as 85-year-old Chen Xiuyu also joined Siji's recycling missions. Now that I have time, I can go to the recycling station whenever I want. Staying at home is boring, but at the recycling station, I can chat with friends when sorting recyclables. Renhua Boro invited Siji volunteers to make over 2,000 vegetarian sticky rice dumplings for the underprivileged residents. Meatless meals are not only good for our health, but also for our planet. This way, we don't have to raise so many livestock. Seeing how the community members are supporting our vegetarian cause makes us very happy. We know we have made progress in promoting vegetarianism, but we need to work harder to make a bigger breakthrough. Working in partnership with community members, Tsuji's environmental messages and vegetarian campaign will be spreading far and wide and inspire more to join the great cause. We stay in Taiwan at the end of the show, where for the first time Taipei Tsuji Hospital held a one-year residency doctor initiation ceremony to help these new doctors take in Tsuji's humanistic values. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.